Dane to Davenkoy Pond on a, well, what can I say? What a bloody summer, eh? It's been absolute crap. Literally crap summer. Worse than we've had in bloody years. But there you go. Such is life, I suppose. Well, what's been happening down here? Well, unfortunately, I lost a fish a few days ago. Again, I lost my uh, large uh, gold ogon. That one, uh, sadly. <coughs> now, I think it was due to spawning. I had a spawning down here in the morning and uh, the pond was in a right bloody mess. I should have filmed it, actually. But uh, it was in a right mess. And uh, it was the old ogon had spawned and uh, wasn't looking too happy afterwards, like, and uh, battered to bits. Literally, the uh, large chags in the pond had uh, harassed it and uh, bashed it against the sides. And the slabs uh, round the top of my pond, they aren't smooth. There is a bit of roughness to them on the inside edges, so the fish do catch themselves, get the odd mark and blemish, but I've never struggled in uh, the years with this pond. But that one took a bash, the old gone, and uh, wasn't happy for the rest of the day. Sort of sat down on the bottom of the pond. Um, it did come up and feed at tea time. Um, had a few bits, so I thought, ooh, yeah, it's going to be okay. Came down the next morning and uh, there it was uh, on its side on the bottom, stung dead. So, I had to dig another hole in the garden. There are fish I've had for, ooh, well, since I started call you, keeping really. So, 18, 19, 20 year old fish. Poor thing. But there, sad loss. But these things happen. Several of the other fish took a large bashing that day as well, got marks on them. But uh, all healing up nicely. Worst one was me, Orf. That one took a big bang on the side. Don't know what that one was doing involved in it all. But uh, that one had quite a mark on its side. Went uh, very red. Had to fish that one out. But, um, play around uh, with a few scales on the side and uh, treat it. And uh, I've left it alone since. It's uh, still showing a little bit reddish. But uh, it's quite a mark on its side, about two inches by about an inch. Damaged scales. I'm uh, not going to pull at it too much. I've got no problems in the pond. And to be honest, catching that bloody orf stresses it so much. And it's like a bloody torpedo around the pond. Absolute nightmare to try and catch. Take three people in that to try and get it. So hopefully I don't have any more problems with that one and it just heals up. Water temps, I'll show you in a minute. They're on the... Uh, way down aren't they? Not that they've got anywhere bloody high this summer. Um, barely had the UV running so I know that we haven't had the blooming sunshine and the solar take from uh, the solar has been uh, right down and uh, we we'll go into the solar on uh, this video because I want to speak to you about ups. Right, lot. some of you know what it is because you've got a UPS on your computer. Uninterruptible, unstoppable power supply. Right, I've got one on my desktop in there, which uh, I actually only added a few months ago. I've got UPS on that, but I've had UPS on the pond for a long time, even before I had the solar. I've been running a UPS system through um, an inverter. So, power goes out, the inverter switches on automatically, jumps to a battery bank. And uh, the batteries, before I had the solar, um, they would just char charge off the mains. So they were always fully charged. As soon as the uh, power went out, boom, the pond would switch over to the inverter and then switch back again when the power came back on. Down here, we suffer with a lot of power cuts. But I'll take you in and have a look at it because I've done an update on it and added the solar to it as well. So let's pop in and have a look at that and we'll have a look at the pond tamp on the way. the orf over there. I'm not going to zoom in on it, don't want to show you that wound too much but uh, it's looking better, a lot better than it was and uh, he's happily feeding but uh, it's a big fish actually, he's the size of most of the koi in here. Right, let's have a look at the pond tamp on the way here. It's still got uh, problems 
ignore what the water one says there that one's faulty that uh, probes actually out and well still in the water but the actual pond temps 18.3 so still fairly good remember as the pond temps drop anywhere down I go off the high protein food at about 16 15 16 and go straight on to the wheat germ it's not going to be many more weeks on the high protein food at this rate everything's good sir veg filter that plant soon grew back told you it would everything else doing brilliant here here lilies out the thing everything running fine on the pond last thing we needed was a spawning right let's go inside and it's a blooming mess in here I'm afraid yeah the old boy here's going through all uh, the power tools he kept from when he was working I haven't used them for years and it's time for everything to go right so over onto the solar wall right I've now switched one of the banks a 480 as you can see inverter no longer running a grid tie there's no power in this solar inverter charger from EcoWorthy absolutely fantastic piece of kit works as a UPS so basically batteries are charged off the solar I'm running off this battery bank at the moment but I don't want to leave it too long on that bank because uh, I'll go into that in a second but you can kill these batteries down quickly right but what this little gizmo do you don't need solar panels on it they're actually on offer at the moment at um, 140 but there's a 10 pound off voucher so you can get it for 130 quid I paid for this one, nowhere sponsored by them, given anything from them or whatever, but uh, I use their solar panels and bits from them. They're a brilliant company. This little magic box cost me 130 quid. You don't need to plug solar panels into it. All you need to do is plug some batteries into it and it will work as a UPS on your pond. Plug your pond into it. So my pond's supplied from this box at the moment. Um, if you look on the screen, you can actually see it's powering off the solar there at the moment, the little panel icon over on the far left, powering through, the batteries there in the middle, it's charging them and then powering the load. And my actual pond load at the moment is about 140 watts I'm running at. Battery bank here, um, that one isn't really part of the bank but I do keep it on there, I like a big 12 volt battery lying around just in case sort of thing. Uh, this bank of five at uh, 35 amps each it's running on that at the moment so it's charging them and powering the pond and come dark it'll uh, I'll, sw I'll alter the uh, system straight over and it'll pop across and run up mains straight through to run the pond overnight uh, at the moment I'm not running the pond nighttime off the batteries because Batteries, well I had two batteries running the pond and to be fair they've lasted well. Um, you use these uh, sealed uh, lead acid batteries. If you, you actually charge them and then discharge them, run them overnight sort of thing to take power from them, you can take them down to about 12.2 volts. I've only ever taken them down to about 12.3, 12.4 running my system. But the two batteries I had, which were 140 amp hours each, which were down under the bench on the end down there, with a little inverter like this, which is a UPS inverter, not this one. I bought this one in the hope of replacing the one that I had because it was having problems. That one's been away. They've been trying to fix it, but it's a no-go, so hence I bought this one. But if you run these lead-acid batteries, they only last for about 300 maybe 500 cycles and they're gone dead that's it it's all you'll get out of them if you want to use it just as a standby bank to only power your system when the power goes out um, 120 amp hour battery will run your pond if it's at about 120 watts 140 watts will run your pond for five six hours um, obviously higher voltages the less time it'll run it but if you get this little box here, put some lead acid batteries on it, don't need solar panels, so 
say you spend 130 on this, say you spend another 200 on two batteries, that will UPS your pond, it'll charge the batteries off the mains, when there's mains power available, it'll keep them sat there, topped up, electric goes out, this will switch over and run your pond off the batteries until the batteries are flat. Lead acid batteries will last you a long time like that, you'll get years out of them just on a trickle top up charge providing you don't drain them down constantly so what I gotta to get to go with this little box is a damn lithium ion battery yeah now lithium ion batteries for a 100 amp hour one it's gonna cost me 300 quid per battery I could really do with two can't afford two at the moment so I'm gonna have to go one see how it goes but I can charge that off the solar in the day and it'll run off that till it gets down to a certain amount and switch back over to the grid but it'll also UPS function all the time as well that's what I need so I've got to buy one or two batteries now 600 quid on some lithium ion batteries oh that's a lot of bloody money but you do get your money's back lithium ion batteries will stand 5,000 cycles four to 5,000 cycles if you look after them again, don't drain them down too much. I.e. don't take the power down on them. The percentage that you take out, you take about 60-70% out. You should see 4,000 to 5,000 cycles. So if you count that in days, that's 4,000 days, really. Because, as I said, with the lead acid batteries, sealed ones, you're lucky if you get four or 500 out of them cycle site for so that's four or five hundred days so technically if i was to charge and discharge this battery pack here now day in day out from now on like i did on the old system i'd kill those batteries in i could kill them in a year now i didn't pay for this little bank of batteries they came free but i don't want to kill them i can use them from time to time and they're my backup for the workshop and the house and this is going to be the new backup for the pond. So as I said, it's on these batteries at the moment, but we're going to take it on to the other batteries. So I'll get round to that in a week or two. And that's been dead handy. So you can do it like I did with this one here. This is a UPS inverter. Or this one here, this is also a UPS inverter. It'll power the pond off the mains. And if the power dips, it goes out. It'll take power from batteries to power the pond and it's instantaneous switch now you can do it with an auto transfer switch straight on the mains as well but you need to buy a separate inverter for that oh it just all gets too complicated this is a 12 volt one worth buying absolute bargain at that price you do a 24 volt one as well so you put two batteries together 24 volts you do it like that don't need solar panels or you can add solar panels I think that one's about 150 but this will do 600 watts and it easily does 600 watts when it's running the fans on all the time as it is here how long it lasts ooh, hopefully you get your money's worth out of it I reckon to get if I get two batteries as well with the cost of this one to get me money back on it I'm going to be looking at about seven years six seven years but the peace of mind down here with the backup we get a lot of power cuts if you suffer with a lot of power cuts then this could be the thing for you okay there we go right um on the page here you can freeze this it is settable as you can see and it's uh, source priority which is nice and it'll handle lead acid sealed batteries and the lithium batteries if you fancy a UPS system so you're on the run if you lose electric like me regularly I mean only in a small town here I'm kind of used to power cuts because we've always had them so I've always had to manage somehow but this has sorted it for now so let's get him back out on the step Okay, 
so there that was a little look at what I'm doing at the moment and uh, I do make enough solar to recharge the batteries in the day and float them at night but I've killed a set pair of lead acid batteries and they're 140 amp hour batteries the other thing with the lead acid batteries sealed or open you can only take so much power out of them about 50 percent so if you've got a 140 amp hour battery you can take about 70 amps out of it and that's it I had two on the system so it gave me 280 so I used to take about 140 amps out of it or just under off the two batteries and that would run my pond overnight it didn't struggle in the winter either but I've been cycling it like that now for two years solid or more and odd times before that um, through the summer you'd make enough power to run it all the time 24 hours a day as the winter come on it used to run for maybe three four hours in the day less light less solar but I'm gonna get uh, a lithium-ion battery for that yeah made in China one hopefully won't burst into flames but they're all made in China aren't they right so if anybody wants to know a little bit more on a UPS system for their pond powering the pond and power cuts um, I know a lot some people are rural if uh, you do get a lot of power cuts and you fancy UPS on it just uh, tip me a message here you know, whatever and I'll uh, be happy to point you in the direction of some of the equipment that'll uh, get you going on it right from me down here in Devon we'll catch up with you in another few weeks but I uh, hope everybody out there in the pond and community is uh, well happy nice to see James back doing a video or two Got to catch up on more of the stuff, but I have been busy. Right, from down here and brightening up a little bit. Crappy Devon, crappy weather. Don't come down here on all day. Right, we'll see you all soon in another one.